hello and welcome back to the channel guys in this short video we will be discussing about type conversions in go type conversions means converting a variable from one type to the variable of another type to get started with this i will put some very simple boilerplate code into the editor so here we have a variable a which is of type integer and has a value of 42 and then we are simply printing the value and type of the variable a next we have a variable b of type float 64 again with the value of 42 and we are printing its value as well as type now go ahead and run this uh, we see the output here at the bottom and we see that the value of a is 42 and type is int and the value of b is also 42 and type is float 64 it's all very simple till here now what happens when I say var b float 64 is equal to a. I go ahead and try to run this and I see that my program fails to compile. Tells me that go cannot use a type which is integer as float 64 in the assignment. So now what's really going on here? If you come from a programming language such as C, C++ or Java um, or even Python, you would expect that a would automatically be type promoted to a float and get stored in the variable b. But that is not how go works. Implicit type conversions have historically been a reason for many errors in computer programs and softwares. So the creators of go decided that they will not have the feature of implicit type conversions in go. Okay, so we do understand that Go will not allow us to perform any sort of implicit type conversions. But what if we really wanted to do this sort of a conversion in our programs and assign the value of A into B? How do we go about achieving that? So uh, for doing that, Go provides us with various sorts of functions of the form T of V using which a value V can be converted to a given type T. Uh, so, uh, how do we implement it here? We simply say float 64 of A and that would convert A to a type of float 64 and then we can simply store that value into the variable B. Let me try to run this now. And yes, our program which was not compiling previously compiled successfully and we see that the variable b has a value of 42 and a type of float 64. And why is this thing super useful? Because on line number 13, we are making our intention absolutely clear to the reader of this program that yes, we want to convert the value a into a value of type float 64. So this feature really, really enhances the readability as well as the maintainability of our code and prevents any sorts of bugs which might be occurring due to implicit type conversions. All right, just to reiterate uh, the same concept again, I will copy these lines and paste them here. Uh, I will create a variable C and then I, uh, C should be of type integer in this case. And what happens when I try to assign B to this variable C? Uh, let me run this and see. Okay, uh, we see that we cannot use B, which is of type float64 as type int in assignment. Again, the same error. Now, what do we do in this case? We simply convert B into an integer and we run the program again. And we see that this time we succeed. Our program compiles. And again, we see that C has a value of 42 and a type of integer okay suppose the next thing i want to do is i want to convert c into a string 42 rather than an integer so i'll simply make a copy of this code um, let me declare a new variable which is d which is of type string and then um, okay firstly what happens when i simply assign c to d i run this code it says again cannot use c as type string in the assignment and you might be tempted to do this at this point of time okay i run this code 
okay and we see a value of star and type of string and this is not what we expected we expected the value to be 42 and not a star so what exactly is going on here okay so what happened here is actually this uh, this 42 value in c got treated as a unicode value and got converted to its corresponding unicode character which in this case was a star suppose a was uh, having a value of 65 and I run this uh, we see that the string D is actually holding the value capital A as opposed to the string value 42 which we wanted the string D to have. So now you might be wondering how do we actually achieve what we set out to achieve that is to have a, a string variable D which contains the string 42. So the answer lies in one of Go's packages, which is called the strconf packages. Uh, and this package implements conversions to and from string representation of basic data type. And the function which we'd want to use from this package here is the itoa function, which converts integers into strings. So uh, let's go ahead and give it a shot. So uh, firstly, I will import the strconf package and then I will say strconf dot itoa of C. And then when I run this code, yes, I see that the variable D now has a value of 65 and its type is string. As for other functions which are provided by the strconf package, you could definitely read through this page golang.org pkg strconf i'll link it in the description below it has various sorts of functions which are very useful for writing programs in go and i do talk about uh, some of them in one of the future videos and that's going to conclude our discussion for type conversions all of the code that we saw today has been updated in this repository ae dorado slash learning go and the file name is type underscore conversion dot go so do check it out found the video helpful please do click the like button if you find the content of my channel helpful please do click subscribe you can hit the bell icon to never miss any new updates and like always thanks a lot for watching and i'll see you in a brand new tutorial